A COVID outbreak in North Korea. The Supreme Court removes cap on personal campaign loans. And Congress holds a hearing on UFOs. That and more on this week's headlines. Welcome to America Uncovered, I'm Chris Chappell. Let's start off with some good news. Police were able to capture a six foot alligator near a school in Charleston, South Carolina. They successfully wrangled the gator, then tackled it to tape its mouth shut. Some good police work, letting the creature know that it had the right to remain silent. Don't say anything until your lawyer gets there. The gator was released a short distance away, probably because the cops didn't have anything on him. and. But he had a good legal defense. I hear that Gator's lawyer is a real shark. In not so good news, multiple mass shootings took place last weekend. Most notably at Irvine Taiwanese Presbyterian Church near Los Angeles, and at a Topps supermarket in Buffalo, New York. These shootings both appear to have been hate crimes. Authorities say the church shooter in California was a Taiwanese immigrant motivated by hate for other Taiwanese people the ones who don't want to be part of China. And according to a 180-page manifesto, the gunman in Buffalo targeted non-white people allegedly motivated by the Great Replacement Conspiracy Theory that claims white people are being replaced by minorities. Look, hating someone because of their race is disgusting and pointless, especially since there are so many better reasons to hate someone. Don't hate someone for what they are, hate them for what they do like people who chew with their mouth open, or people who don't say thank you when you hold the door for them. But sadly, people are going around shooting each other for no good reason. You know what this means? America is back. We've officially beaten COVID. Unlike North Korea, where they're experiencing a massive COVID outbreak. Oh man, this means I have to cancel my vacation to North Korea. I was so looking forward to visiting Pyongyang for a couple of days and then off to one of their prisons for the rest of my suddenly very short life. For Kim Jong-un to admit there's been an outbreak, it's gotta be really bad. That means he knows he can't make people believe there isn't one even with state-run media. Which is crazy since state-run media tries to get people to believe that his grandfather, Kim Il-sung, never pooped. Although I guess that isn't too hard for some citizens in North Korea to believe since so many of them never eat. So how did Kim Jong-un respond to this COVID outbreak? Did he reach out to other countries for vaccines or reliable means of testing? Nope. He blamed officials' carelessness for the outbreak and mobilized the military. Because mobilizing the military is Kim Jong-un's response to everything. Is he gonna threaten to nuke COVID as well? Although to be fair, that's about the only thing no one has tried yet. The Department of Homeland Security announced they were pausing the formation of a disinformation governance board. They plan on reviewing their strategy behind it. And in the meantime, the person that was supposed to lead the group, Nina Yankovic, resigned. A DHS spokesman said, false attacks have become a significant distraction from the department's vitally important work to combat disinformation that threatens the safety and security of the American people. So they're saying that the department meant to fight disinformation was shut down by too much disinformation. It's like a plumber saying they can't do their job because there are too many toilets. Can't unclog them all, so why even bother? Frankly, I'm not sorry the disinformation board is shutting down because I'm starting to feel like America had gotten the kind of plumber who thinks every sink is a toilet. More after the break. Welcome back. The FDA has authorized COVID booster shots for kids ages 5 to 11. The authorization only applies to healthy kids, though, so if any of you youngins want a booster shot, you're going to have to lay off the smoking and drinking. The pandemic has been rough for everyone. However, there may be some debate as to how much protection some booster shots actually provide. A recent study showed that the protection given against the Omicron subvariant from the Pfizer COVID vaccine fades rapidly after the second and third shot. It said, our study found a rapid decline in Omicron-specific serum neutralizing antibody titers only a few weeks after the second and third doses. 
So the booster seems super promising at first, then after a few weeks it slowly drifts away and leaves you feeling completely vulnerable. Like every online date I've ever had. Early research in a different study shows that getting infected with the Omicron variant after being vaccinated produces more antibodies than the COVID booster shot. So you know what that means, everybody. Time to start licking escalator handrails again. Mmm, tastes like protection. Speaking of removing looming threats, the U.S. will soon remove five extremist groups from its list of foreign terrorist organizations. The groups include a Basque separatist group, a Japanese cult, a radical Jewish group, and two Islamic groups. These terrorist groups were removed from the list because they're believed to be no longer active, which isn't a surprise. With a name like Yuskari Ta Akatasuna, you need something snappier, more pronounceable, with better brand recognition. They weren't even on Instagram. Honestly, it's like they weren't even trying. The first person they should have kidnapped was a PR guy. The U.S. removed these groups after reviewing their designation, which happens every five years. According to U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, revoking FTO designations ensures our terrorism sanctions remain current and credible and does not reflect any change in policy towards the past activities of any of these organizations. At least, congrats to ISIS for being barely relevant enough to stay in the game for another five years. I'm sure your comeback will be just as big as MC Hammer's. Speaking of hammer time, the Supreme Court. By a vote of six to three, the Supreme Court sided with Texas Senator Ted Cruz in a campaign finance case. You see, politicians can make personal loans to their political campaigns. But legally, they could only get up to $250,000 of their loan back from their campaign. The Supreme Court just struck down that law. They said the law was unconstitutional because it limited political speech without a justified reason. In 2018, Cruz loaned his campaign $260,000 to specifically challenge this law. Boy, isn't it wonderful to have leaders that can just afford to throw around more than a quarter of a million dollars to prove a point? Makes them seem so much more relatable, doesn't it? Although to be fair, Ted Cruz is pretty relatable, since he also looks like he's practicing smiling in the mirror. What? Doesn't everyone do that? So the majority of the Supreme Court said this law was unconstitutional. But in a dissenting opinion, Justice Elena Kagan said this was a bad idea because it could encourage corruption between politicians and their donors. So essentially, this campaign finance law could limit who runs for office to just the rich because they can afford not to get paid back by their campaign. But striking down this law could lead to corruption. Both of those arguments seem ridiculous. After all, the rich are basically the only ones who run for office anyway, and there's already a ton of corruption. So there's nothing to worry about. But there's also everything to worry about. But at least someone we can rely on being honest is former President George W. Bush, who said this while condemning Putin's invasion of Ukraine. The decision of one man to launch a wholly unjustified and brutal invasion of Iraq, I mean of Ukraine, <laughs> Iraq, too. Anyway, uh, <laughs> 75. Uh. Excellent speech. No notes. That slip up, like the brutal invasion of Iraq, apparently, was just a happy accident. But hey, like Bush said, he blames that gaffe on his age. And he's not president anymore, so there's nothing to worry about. Except for the fact he's four years younger than our current president. So also, there's everything to worry about. And after the break, NATO is getting bigger, thanks to Russia. Welcome back. Finland and Sweden have officially submitted their NATO membership applications, which essentially means they're joining NATO. Now this might worry you if you watched my episode a few weeks ago when I told you that Putin threatened to deploy nuclear arms near Finland and Sweden if they did that. Well, now that they are officially planning to join NATO, Putin has changed his mind. He says Russia has no problems with Finland and Sweden being in NATO. But he added the caveat that there would be consequences if NATO moved weapons into the territory of the two countries. But at this point, I'm not so sure we should take that threat too seriously either. And you know Putin is losing the war when McDonald's announces they're leaving Russia for good. According to McDonald's CEO, 
Some might argue that providing access to food and continuing to employ tens of thousands of ordinary citizens is surely the right thing to do. Would those some who might argue that happen to be your investors? It's the right thing to do for our stocks. Rabble, rabble, rabble. The CEO basically said they were pulling out because of the Ukraine war. So McDonald's is leaving to show solidarity with Ukraine. But if McDonald's really wanted to help Ukraine, they should open more restaurants in Russia. Because diabetes and heart disease will kill way more Russians than any Ukrainian army ever could. Speaking of dead Russians, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis signed a law declaring November 7th Victims of Communism Day. And this Vice article is big mad about that, calling it part of DeSantis's ongoing effort to turn Florida's schools into the education wing of the Republican Party. As part of Victims of Communism Day, students in Florida public schools will be required to receive 45 minutes of classroom instruction per year on the horrors of communism. 45 minutes a year. Vice is right. That's ridiculous. That's outrageous. Especially considering you only need 45 seconds to teach the danger of communism by reminding students that people in North Korea believe Kim Il-sung doesn't poop. I'm sure the kids will love that lesson. Then tell them about the labor camps. DeSantis said he signed this legislation because honoring the people that have fallen victim to communist regimes and teaching our students about those atrocities is the best way to ensure that history does not repeat itself. Which is a nice sentiment, although a bit ironic, that Florida is trying to prevent history from repeating itself, considering every Florida man story is essentially history repeating itself. This would be like Oregon trying to prevent white people from having dreadlocks. I agree, but isn't that what you're known for? DeSantis also signed a law making it illegal to protest outside of private homes in Florida. This was in response to several protests outside of Supreme Court justices' homes after a leaked document showed that they were considering overturning Roe v. Wade. Democrats argue this law is a violation of free speech, while DeSantis argues this protects people's right to privacy. While I argue, Protesters aren't what you need to worry about outside your home in Florida. It's gators. And now that they're lawyered up, they're unstoppable. That's obviously a silly thing to worry about. Let's move on to a real threat. UFOs. Congress held a hearing Tuesday on declassified UFO photos and videos. The military admitted it doesn't know what these objects are and their lack of knowledge could present a national security threat. Well, I'm glad we had a full day congressional hearing only to learn that the unidentified flying objects are unidentified. Our tax dollars at work, folks. It's unlikely that these are aliens, but if they are, I know exactly how this will play out. Republicans will say the aliens aren't allowed to get abortions, but can donate as much money as they want for election campaigns, as long as they aren't illegal aliens. And Democrats will say they should be given free health care and allowed to vote in the next election for us. Uh, I mean whoever they want to vote for. And I'll say, please take me with you. I'm tired of this country, these political parties. I'm tired of reporting on the tangle of their partisanship. So what do you think about the stories we covered this week? Leave your comments below. And remember, America Uncovered is mainly supported by viewers. Be sure to visit patreon.com slash America Uncovered. Contribute a dollar or more per episode because we rely on your support to help us keep making great episodes or join our exclusive censorship-free social media community on Locals. Check out americauncovered.locals.com. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.